Okay, it's been a hot minute since I've touched on anything related to ARC, but we've got a lot of upcoming events this week, along with some mentions of ARC 2 and then the mess behind the scenes because Nitrado is back and up to their scummy business practices. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and we're going to get into all of that and more. But first, thanks again for your continued support for my ARC News uploads, in case you haven't done so already. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are, of course, greatly appreciated. Chapters are in place and available for a smooth and easy viewing experience. And let's dive into the latest from ARC. Kicking this thing off is the news that Turkey Trials ends, as of the recording of this video, tomorrow, Monday the 18th, with the next major holiday event, Winter Wonderland, kicking off just a few days later, starting on December the 21st through January the 7th. Event rates seem to fall into line with what we would normally see, one and a half times for PvP and PvE, four and a half times for small tribes, reducing to three and a half for breeding, and Arc Pock is of course 4.5 times across the board. Expect to see Raptor Claws flying through the night sky along with a Yeti, Abominable Snowman, Pegomastix Grouch, and Wild Rideable Reindeer, all of which will drop coal and mistletoe. Also look out for two new chibis, two emotes, and three event skins, one of which is the Krampus costume, complete with a now-confirmed tongue that moves. For those of you who simply cannot contain your love for ARC, official merchandise is now available, including shirts, plushies, including the ever-famous poop ball, and different accessories like pens and hats. Sadly, I don't see a I Survived Windows 10 PvP shirt anywhere in the store. Who knows? Maybe that's coming at a later date. Also, be warned, I am hearing that there are issues with orders and that they only ship to the U.S. Maybe someone can confirm that for me. And, oh, by the way, wildcard, I am totally down for that Windows 10 PvP shirt purchase. Let's make it happen. Moving on, and survival of the fittest has been discussed for a while now. Is it in? Is it out? Well, it is announced as arriving on December 21st for crossplay, and that should coincide with the Winter Wonderland go live as well. It has apparently been re-evolved from the ground up with redesigned mechanics, pitting 60 players against each other in a battle royale. And if there is one mode in Ark I have zero time with, it is SOTF. Maybe when the switch is activated, I will give it a shot. I feel like with only the island and the rotation, we need these events and modes as quickly as possible as the player base continues to stay pretty evenly split between ASA and ASE. The final portion of the crunch was devoted to once again showcasing the Arcathon modding contest. And again, nothing really new to report here. 50 grand is still up for grabs in the modders track, which are mods designed for cross-platform and relate to maps, skins, dinos, weapons, and more. The studio's track has three $100,000 development grants for DLC level premium mods, and for both of these contests, the submissions have already begun. Not mentioned anywhere in this crunch was any follow-up statement to what we heard from Jeremy Steiglitz during the Extra Life event, especially when it comes to him revealing those paid content packs. Now remember, his rationalization for these packs was to keep the entire wildcard development team centered in on Ark Survival Ascended, bringing into question if Ark 2 had been canned. More on that in a moment. Now, another notable omission is anything to do with cryopods. And I know and have experienced firsthand the issues when you reach the dino caps on servers, and there are arguments being made for and against them being added back into the game. This would be a great question for chat. Where do you stand on cryos? Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay, we're done with the crunch for now. Now on to snail games and circling back around to it, Arc 2. And again, after those comments made by Steiglitz, 
co-founder of Studio Wildcard, it sounded like Wildcard was pivoting away from ARK 2, and I theorized it had to do with lack of money, because ARK Survival Ascended had always felt, at least to me, as a crowdfunding effort to pay for ARK 2's development. And if ARK Survival Ascended wasn't selling as well as Wildcard and or Snail thought it would, they would have to modify their plans going forward. But apparently... Nobody told Snail Games what's going on here because in a recent SEC filing where they published the entirety of a recent presentation made at NobleCon, an emerging growth equity conference, Snail was showing off their content roadmap, including Arc Survival Ascended, Arc Mobile, the canonical story expansion for ASA showing here as June 2024, and then Arc 2 Holiday 2024 along with Project Hermes also Holiday 2024. First off, we've got this canonical expansion, which was previously shown by Studio Wildcard as part of their Extra Life event and their roadmap shows the next canon expansion date as TBA. But here, Snail Games is saying June 2024. Then we see Project Hermes, which we've seen in trailers from a long time ago, and it turns out it was some sort of NFT-driven space combat and exploration game. And finally, Arc 2 Holiday 2024. And who knows if any of this is accurate, considering the source of the information, it could still be in the works, although with Arc Ascended bleeding well into 2025, one has to question if Wildcard has the studio firepower to simultaneously handle further Ascended development while finishing and launching Arc 2, a first-person Souls-like Arc experience. Or... This could be a case of Snail Games just riding it till it dies, milking the concept of Arc 2 up until the point we finally learn it has been canceled or postponed to a non-disclosed date. Bet on a follow-up report for Arc 2 once anything is made public. And let's finish this one up with a little post that looks harmless, but turns out has some sinister intentions, or at least it could. A few days ago, update 32.24 was pushed live for unofficial server and clients, and it reads as follows. Updates how unofficial servers are listed to prevent errors and exploits. And I doubt all of that. To see non-commercially, that's non netrado hosted unofficial servers, please enable the checkbox, show player servers, and refresh the session list. So what this update has now done is place non netrado hosted servers behind an extra blocker not showing them with other unofficial servers and requiring players to go through an extra step to see these server types. I know it's not the end of the world, but certainly obvious what Nitrado is trying to do here, pushing players over to their servers by removing all non Nitrado hosted servers from the queue, with some reports stating that servers have altogether disappeared from the queues. I mean, just completely. But this is where it starts to get sketchy because not everybody knows about this. As part of this update, and conveniently not showing up anywhere in these patch notes, were a ton of INI changes that were installed without user consent, including a Nitrado game server query and even a live link. Now, why would a server query ever be installed by Nitrado, seeing as how these are servers hosted outside of their network? I mean, that doesn't make sense, right? And on top of that, it seems a trace utilities INI was also installed. Again, under the radar, and these are the kind of files that compile things like IP addresses, locations, basically what's going on, when, why, where. I mean, you get the point. And so again, the question is, why would Nitrado and Wildcard have this installed into a server host that is not using Nitrado? There was also an agreed to terms line now generated in the game user settings that as far as I know was not prompted. And these are just being installed into your game files behind the scenes. What does it all mean? Well, it can't be good. These are files being installed without consent, giving Nitrado the ability to do and see things they shouldn't have access to on privately hosted servers, all while making it harder for players who want to play unofficial to find servers that are not hosted by Nitrado. And we've talked about this in the past, how when Nitrado was forced to open up the back end to allow hosting off network, that we knew they would try something again and we would need to stay vigilant. 
Nitrado told us all who they were back when Rafael Stange, the CEO for Nitrado, made this public statement blaming content creators and staunchly defending their exclusive rights to hosting ARC servers, lashing out at anyone calling their business practices unethical. If there is one thing we should take away from all of this, it should be when someone tells you who they are, believe them. This feels to me that Nitrado waited for the last storm to blow over and has now returned to doing exactly as they please with the ARC player base, going so far as to install monitoring files without player consent. Who knows where this all goes from here. I would expect a topic to start making the rounds with the ARC player base, and as updates become available, expect a full follow-up report here on the channel. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are of course greatly appreciated. All my socials can be found in the video description below. Shout out to the now over 186,000 of you that have taken the plunge and hit subscribe. And a special thanks goes out to my Patreon supporters. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.